Hi, this is Dr. Janelle Ott. I teach double reads at Angela State University. I am also the instructor of bassoon at Abilene Christian University, Hardin-Simmons University, and um, McMurray University in Abilene. I've taught in both the Dallas-Fort Worth area and in rural North, East, and West Texas for the past 12 years. Um, I'm here to do a little miniature skills video today about vibrato. So vibrato is something that is more divisive than you think on bassoon. There are as many people as there are who are band directors. That's how many different opinions you will have over how to do vibrato. Should you do vibrato? When should you do it? Sh what should it sound like? So I wanted to give you my approach. This is the approach that I have learned by studying with bassoonists and also in my professional career I play with several regional orchestras so hopefully this will help you as you develop your approach to vibrato. So what is vibrato? Literally it just means vibrating and what you are doing is you're causing the air that you use when you play to vibrate in a rhythmic or semi-rhythmic way. This makes the notes sound like it's pulsing just a little bit so like here as opposed to straight. And maybe it's easier to hear on a higher note. So vibrato is one of those things that is easier to, to add on some instruments than on other instruments. It's not super easy to add to bassoon. And that's important to know because it's dangerous to introduce it too early into your playing. One of the things that makes bassoon unique, this is also true for oboe, is that our reeds are very, very flexible. The way that we play in tune on bassoon is by controlling the combination of our airspeed and our embouchure. So if you start to mess with your airspeed, which is what we do in vibrato, you are going to risk also messing up your pitch. For this reason, I don't recommend learning vibrato until you can play in tune with a tuner consistently. Uh, what does that mean? Well, basically you're going to do long tones on bassoon, not the kind of long tones that you do in band all together. This is you in a room by yourself with a tuner and a metronome. So we start out with something that I call an eight count straight tone, which is nothing fancy. You've got your tuner on. I recommend Korg tuners, K-O-R-G, because not all tuners do a good job picking up bassoon. Uh, the Tonal Energy app also works on your phone. That one works pretty well for bassoon. But if you ever are playing with a tuner and you notice that the tuner is telling you that you're playing a different note than you're playing, you can't use that tuner. It's picking up one of the partials in your sound. And if you tune the partial, the note itself will be out of tune. So you take your Korg tuner, you put your metronome on, I like 60. And your job is to just hold a note until you can get it to be completely in tune with the tuner for eight counts in a row, not wavering, and ideally the first eight counts, so. Like that. Once you can do that, here's how I teach vibrato to my students. The first thing you're going to do is you're gonna put your hand about six to eight inches in front of your mouth and you're just gonna pulse some air onto your hand. So it'll sound like this. Like, listen again. So then you choose a note on your bassoon. I'm going with F above the staff. And you're going to do exactly what you just did with your air, but now you're playing a note. So that's usually going to give you a pretty good vibrato. Um, the problem is that it's hard to hold on to that. So then we start building vibrato technique into your playing. The way we're going to do this is we're going to go back to the tuner and the metronome. I'll sometimes have the metronome a little faster for this. So long tones, I'll do quarter note equals 60. If I'm working vibrato, I'll often do something more like 72. And what you're going to do is on every beat, every pulse with the metronome, you're going to do a very sudden, very dramatic 
crescendo, decrescendo. It should kind of sound like there's a mosquito flying around the room and occasionally coming right by your ear. So it'll be like, um, it's not supposed to sound amazing, but it is supposed to stay in tune the whole time. That's your job. So you want it to be a very distinct crescendo, decrescendo, and you want it to stay in tune. Let me demonstrate. Once you're good at quarter notes, you start doing eighth notes. Can you go to triplets? I can tell I'm, I haven't done this in a while because it's like, it's in tune, but it's not completely staying in tune the whole time. If you can get to the point where you're doing, um, Quintuplets. That's about as fast as it should ever go on bassoon. Hold on just a second. Maggie, no. Come here. Sorry. My dog has been napping and now she thinks I'm going to play with her. Anyway, um, so that's bassoon vibrato. It is not what you do on saxophone. On saxophone and maybe trumpet, you do something called jaw vibrato or lip vibrato, where you're actually moving your jaw up and down. We don't do that on bassoon. It's coming purely from how you are pulsing your air. Um, anyway, good luck. That's my introduction to vibrato.